This is 34 News with Sunita Shaw and John Corbin with the news. Susanna Classell with arts and entertainment. And Dan Zeltman with sports. From SPF ETV Studios, here is Sunita Shaw and John Corbin. Hi, and welcome to the June edition of 34 News. I'm John Corbin. And I'm Sunita Shaw. Stay tuned for stories on Smack and how DECA did at Nationals. All that and more after this brief public service announcement. Why would anybody give someone they don't know a gift? They do it because this gift saves lives. And the need for it is desperate. We need over 20,000 people to give this precious gift every day. Please give blood. There's a life to be saved right now. Call the American Red Cross at 1-800-GIVE-LIFE. The student movement against cancer, otherwise known as SMAC, is once again making school headlines with a recent meeting that was held with guest speaker Carl Nelson, an ex-New York Giant. Mr. Nelson spoke to the members of SMAC on his two experience battling cancer and how he is doing now. Also, the club hosted a Relay for Life, where students collected money and walked certain distances in an effort to aid cancer research. Congratulations on a job well done. From April 23rd to April 27th, 30 qualified DECA students went to Anaheim, California to compete in the International Career Development Conference. SPF was well represented, winning second place for the Creative Marketing Project by Andrew Elko and Robert Bug and Ryan Crawford. Two Spiffy students also placed in the top 10 in the nation, Andrew Pavoni and Ryan Crawford. Congratulations to all. Beth Hogan caught up with DECA members. Beth? I'm here with Dave Bell, a member of DECA. Dave, can you tell me where your nationals were held this year? Anaheim, California. How many students went? 30. Um, what activities did you guys take part in while you were there? Well, uh, besides the competitions, we went to Universal Studios and uh, Disney's new theme park, California Adventure. Uh, what were the results from the competition? Well, uh, our creative marketing research project got second in the country. That was uh, Andrew Elko, Mike Hessemer, Rob Bug, and Ryan Crawford. And uh, I did miserable. I didn't win anything. <laughs> did you have fun? Yeah, I had a lot a good time. It was good. All right. Well, this has been Beth Hogan. Now back to the studio. Thanks, Beth. In SGA, Student Government Association, after an extremely bu busy May, is down to the home stretch. After successful projects like Mr. Spiffy High, the Road Rally, and the first annual 3-on-3 basketball tournament, all that is left is finding out who will be in the cast of next year's SGA. For that and more, let's go to Tyler Stender. Tyler? Hi, this is Tyler Stender reporting for 34 News. I'm here with two members of SGA, John Corbin and Dave Bell. So, uh, John, what's going on in uh, SGA? Any uh, upcoming events? Well, uh, right now we are quite busy in SGA. We have uh, the Road Rally coming up Sunday, May 7th, something like 20th. that. 20th. 20th. And uh, we just uh, got through a, a successful 3-on-3 uh, three -three basketball tournament, and then we have elections coming up. All right. And uh, Dave, uh, so what's going on with the elections? Well, uh, there's going to be a primary to uh, narrow down all the races to two candidates. And then we're going to be giving out blurbs about each of them so the school gets to know their candidates. And then we're going to have the final elections. All right, thanks. And that was Tyler Sender. Now back to you. Now that their last he year here at Spiffy High is coming to an end, seniors are preparing for college and are getting ready to head their separate ways. Jamie and Nisi went out on location to find out what some of, what a, what some of Spiffy's infamous seniors are doing this summer and next year. Jamie? 34 News, I'm here with five seniors of the class of 2001. Why don't you guys go down the line and uh, say your name and what you plan on doing next year. Uh, my name is Tim Gander, senior as Jamie just said. Uh, next year I'm going to Kent State University out in Ohio. Don't ask me why, I just am. Uh, there I plan on studying marine biology and skiing because I want to be a snowboard instructor. Next. 
Hi, I'm Beth Hogan, and I'll be going to the University of Rhode Island and majoring in communications. My name is Katie Blum. I'll be going to Monmouth, and I'll be majoring in business. My name is Alicia Pinyad. I'm going to Rutgers, and I'm majoring in elementary education. My name is Aaron Kelly, and I'm going to University of Maryland, and I'm not sure what I'm majoring in. Thanks a lot, guys. I wish you the best of luck next year. This has been James and Easy. The ROTC program finished up the year with an awards ceremony in the new gym to honor the outstanding members of the program. Some awards given out were the Scholastic Award, Outstanding Male and Female Cadet Awards, and the Outstanding Flight Award. Congratulations to all the winners. On May 2nd, the Mr. Spiffy High competition was held. The event is held annually as a fun way to raise money for different charities. Male students from Spiffy competed in swimwear, evening wear, and talent, and in the prior week to the event, raised money for charities of their choice. Adam Chunoy went on location to, with our reigning king and other competitors. This is me too. I'm Adam Chunoy, reporting for 34 News. On the eve of, Mar of May 1st was our annual Mr. Spiffy High, and I'm here with the contestants and the winner of Mr. Spiffy High. John Hagen, Walter Biner, John Corbin, and Gary Fletcher. Uh, what was it like last night? What did you guys think? Um, it was fun. Uh, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, it was a good experience. I'm going to be coming back for the next two years, or hopefully one year. So. What did you guys think about like going into this? Like, How did you like prepare for this or whatever? Any of you guys? Um, well, for my talent, I had a uh, Matt Robinson, PJ Quino, and Ark helped me out on some break dancing, and we, we had to practice our sequences a lot. Um, for mine, I did. Uh, Do you have any more gum from the motion picture Billy Madison? And I ran through uh, the motions and watched the movie with the people that were doing the performance with me. Uh, mine was actually a little bit more difficult than these guys. Uh, I had been actually keeping this a secret from my mom for a while. I sang Perfect Fan to my mom. Uh, I had to do it in secret when she wasn't around. I actually tried to have somebody play it on piano, but uh, it didn't work out, so I had to change it at the last second. Yeah, kind of same with me. Uh, nobody knew what I was doing up until actually last night, and uh, I had to find, I had to get an instrumental done uh, from uh, One Song Glory from Rent, and uh, kind of had to practice. That song is way out of my range. If you hear my voice, uh, it's it's kind of it's kind of it's kind of tough, so I don't know. But other than that, yeah, it was kind of it was fun. I had a good time. Um, were any of you guys nervous when you guys were up there or anything like that? Or no, not at all. I felt like puking before. <laughs> <laughs> I was a little nervous just standing around waiting, but then once you started doing it, uh, didn't really think about it. That's cool. And for John, I have to ask you, how was it like to know that you were the winner last night? Um, I was really surprised. I thought actually that Gary or John were going to win, and um, I was pretty happy, you know. It's, I'm not letting it go to my head, though. Every year, many students, mainly juniors and seniors, test their knowledge at the college-level classes known as APs. At the end of the year, these students have the opportunity to take an exam of that class. If they do well enough, they will receive college credit for that class when they go to higher education. These tests are taken over the last two weeks. Senior Rob Bug stated they were challenging, but I think I did well. On another note, on May 23rd, select students in the high school had the chance to see what kind of career they would like to pursue in the future. Careers like journalism, communications, and law enforcement were some of the careers highlighted. The special speaker was Mark Boyd, who was the commissioner of the Department of Labor. <coughs> students felt that Mr. Boyd was very interesting, and junior Tim Ryan even stated Mr. Boyd was very informative. The end of the school year is approaching, and with that comes final exams. Chris Smith got a hold of two SPF students and found out their strategies for preparing. Chris? Two students of SPF, and you are? I'm Dave Schwartz. And you? Eric Fields. Uh, so guys, how are you preparing for the upcoming finals? Uh, I've been studying a lot, going home every day after school and studying for a few hours, eating dinner and studying until about 4 in the morning, and uh, getting some sleep and coming to school. And Eric? Yeah, I'm pretty much doing a lot of sleeping, and in chemistry we have a big review packet, so I'm looking through that. Cumulative review. 
Are you guys uh, nervous at all? You're anxious about it? I'm kind of excited. It's my last finals I'll ever take at Scotch Plains Family High School. I can't wait. And Derek? Yeah, I'm just gonna take it as it comes to me. All right, this has been Chris Smith. Now back to the studio. That wraps it up for hard news, but don't go anywhere because we'll be right back with Arts and Entertainment. and they're just like you. Earning your amateur radio license is easy. Just contact the American Radio Relay League at 1-800-326-3942. Now for the last time, let's go to the extremely cheerful Susanna Classell with Arts Entertainment. Susanna? Thanks, John. On June 21st, the graduating class of 2001 will attend Project Graduation. The event will occur at 10 p.m. at the Mendham Racquet Club. This will provide the whole class with one last time to interact before going their separate ways. It will also provide students with a safe, non-alcoholic environment. It should prove to be a special night filled with memories for the senior class. The chorus held their spring concert on May 9th at 7.30 p.m. The concert was, as usual, a great success. After a fun-filled trip to Disney World and a couple of amazing concerts, the chorus has had quite a year. Lots of outstanding performances were held by show choir, Lost Con, and select choir. Now let's go on location with Jeremy Thompson, who has more. Jeremy? This is Jeremy Thompson reporting for 34 News. I'm here with Gary Fletcher, the president of the chorus here at the high school. So Gary, um, I heard you guys took a trip to Florida uh, and competed nationally. Can you tell me a little bit about it? Yeah, um, uh, earlier in April, we took a trip down to Florida. Uh, I, would, I think we did it really well. We put on a good show. Uh, our select chorus did uh, two numbers there. Um, full choir did a few numbers. Uh, and our show choir. So, I mean, we, I think we performed really well. I think our show, our show for show choir was the best we had done ever uh, throughout this whole year. Are there any soloists or other people that stood out in chorus this year? Um, yeah, we actually had a lot of standouts. Um, we had freshman uh, Ryan Aspel, uh, Adam Corbin, uh, junior Ian Worley. For some of the girls, we had uh, Jillian Prefact, she's a freshman, uh, Chrissy Parada, uh, Lindsey Davis. I'd say myself, but I don't want to sound uh, too snobby or whatever, but yeah, and uh, yeah, we, we have a lot of good talent out there. And um, I heard you guys just had a, a concert this past Wednesday. Could you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, this Wednesday was our spring concert. Uh, my last concert here for chorus. It was kind of sad. Um, it, it was really good. We did a lot of uh, new numbers that we hadn't done uh, for the trip. Uh, we did uh, Duel of the Fates, the theme song from Star Wars Episode One, um, A Perfect Fan by the Backstreet Boys, and that's... Uh, it was a song where all the senior mothers came out to, you know, sing with their kids or stand with their kids as they sang to, sang to them. Um, and uh, it, was, it was a really good time. It was a fun time. And do you see any um, people that maybe be um, leaders next year? Yeah, definitely. Uh, like I said earlier, uh, Ian Worley. I mean, I have, I have a lot of, you know, faith in that kid. I mean, he shows a lot of promise. Um, Ryan Aspel. And uh, Adam Corbin coming up. They, I mean, they should be they should be really good by the time uh, even by next year. They should stand out um, for girls. I mean, you still have Chrissy Parada and Lane Bonstein, uh, Stephanie Fowler. So I think the chorus program itself should carry along very well. All right, thanks, Gary. No problem. It's been Jeremy Thompson reporting for 34 News. Back to the studio. Thanks, Jeremy. Many spiffy high kids are getting very excited for summer vacation. Students have many plans already made, some of which are traveling to Europe, working, going to the Jersey Shore, lifeguarding, and for many of us seniors, getting ready for college. For more on the summer plans of spiffy high kids, let's go on location with Joanna Chihan. Joanna? I'm reporting for 34 News, and I'm here with a couple of students. Can you guys tell me your names and what you're doing this summer? I'm Walter Biner. I'm uh, lifeguarding, and I'm teaching kids to swim this summer at the JCC of Central New Jersey. 
Hi, my name is Wes, and I'm going to Europe for two weeks. I'm going to Spain and Germany with my sisters. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to Barcelona, and that's about it. Hi, I'm Mike, and I'll be spending most of my time at Sesame Street and the Discovery Zone. My name's Dave, and I'll be spending the summer working for the town with the Department of Public Works. Hi, uh, my name is Dave, and I'll be spending my summer doing stuff. Hi, I'm Beth, and I'll be going to Myrtle Beach and working. Uh, my name is Kenny, I'm spending my time in Africa in the Terry Lou Zoo. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't work. All right, thanks guys, and now back to the studio. Thanks, Joanna. The Moonglowers recently won the state finals competition at William Borough High School. They were named the best trombone section, and Tom Hardy won best drummer in the state. In addition to being the number one jazz band in the state, the music department recently held a jazz festival. It was a night full of great music performed by the Moonglowers, SPF Jazz, and jazz bands from both Park and Terrell Middle Schools. The annual District Arts Festival took place on May 3rd at 7 o'clock in the Old Gym. The staff of the art department transformed the gym into an art gallery. All of Scotch Plains Fanwood School District was represented, including the four elementary schools, Coles, McGinn, Brunner, and School One, the two middle schools, Park and Tarrell, and the high school. Our teachers from each school brought their students' best work in with them, including sculpture, collage, painting, and pencil sketches. Many students and parents came to appreciate the art. BSU, in cooperation with Black Pearl Productions, staged their encore performance of The Wiz on Saturday, May 19th. Stephen Moore went on location to find out more. Stephen? We reported for Channel 34 News. I'm here with a member from the BSU play, The Wiz, Trevor Horn. Uh, what part did you play? I played the lion. Uh, I understand you guys did the play over again. Uh, how'd you feel about it? Yeah, we did it over again uh, last Saturday, May 19th. Uh, I guess it was all right. Uh, how was the audience? I had an audience out there, you know what I mean? It looked fairly well, I guess. I don't know. You can, uh... Okay, and uh, how did the performance go? The performance did well. Uh, we did uh, extra better, if that makes any sense. But uh, me and Steven were the two stars, and we obviously stepped it up to two levels for the next show, you know what I mean? So. That's All right, man. Thanks. All right, back to the studio. Thanks, Steve. The Flag Squad held a special assembly performance in the new gym featuring a lyrical routine which incorporated both flags and sabers. Let's watch them perform. <laughs> Is this month's Female Senior of the Month. Erin is a very involved member of the track team and plays first in counties for the half mile. In the fall, Erin will attend Rutgers, but her major is still undecided. Good luck in school, and now let's go on location with Greg Herrian, who caught up with Erin to find out more. Greg? I'm here with the Female Senior of the Month, Erin Kelly. How's the school year going so far, Erin? It's pretty good. I heard that you recently received a scholarship. Um, can you tell us a little more about that? Um, I wasn't at the award ceremony, but I heard that it was, I only had one, and it was for $1,000. So. Well, what, um, what school are you going to where you're going to be able to use a scholarship? Um, I'm going to Rutgers College. Do you know what the major is? Do you have a decided major? No, I'm going in undecided. Well, uh, wish you lots of luck, and hope that you have a good rest of the year. This has been Greg Karen reporting for TV 34 News, now back to the studio. Thanks, Greg. June's Male Senior of the Month is Jude Silva. Jude is involved as the chairperson of SAD and a member of ASA. Jude has also been awarded third best in the nation for his artwork in the Fan Scotian. Jude will be attending NYIT and will be majoring in animation next year. We wish him the best of luck and congratulate him on his award. For more with Jude, let's go on location with Kristen Kurz. Kristen? Hi, this is Kristen Kurz reporting for 34 News, and I'm here with the Male Senior of the Month, June, Jude Silva. So Jude, how does it feel to be the Male Senior of the Month? Well, it's a shock because I, I, was, I was totally not expecting it, but it's an honor. And are you involved in any clubs or activities? Um, I'm the uh, chairperson for um, SAD Mural, 
and uh, I'm a member of uh, ASA, Asian Student Association, and uh, yeah, that's, <laughs> I'm, I'm ready to stand to you. Yeah. Um, we recently heard that you won an award for art. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Um, I was ranked third best in the nation for my portfolio for Fast Ocean, and uh, a cartoon I made for that newspaper uh, was uh, placed uh, second. Uh, was won won second place, a uh, third place actually, uh, for like the special featured cartoon. That's great. <laughs> um, have you heard any? from colleges or do you know where you're going at? Yes, um, I'm actually going to um, NYIT and I'll be, uh, I'll be majoring in animation. Congratulations, good luck. This has been Chris and Carter's reporting for 34 News, now back to the studio. Thanks, Kristen. June's Faculty Member of the Month is one of the latest additions to SPFHS staff, Ms. Peruta. This is Ms. Peruta's first time, first full-time year at the high school, and she enjoys it very much. In her spare time, she enjoys reading and writing poetry, swimming and running. Also, Ms. Peruta has recently tried out for Survivor, the third edition. She is very excited and hopes she will make it, and so does everyone here. Best of luck to Ms. Peruta. Now let's go on location with Katie Bruno to find out more. Katie? Hi, this is Katie Bruno reporting for 34 News, and I'm here with this month's Faculty Member of the Month, Ms. Peruta. So, Ms. Peruta, um, how long have you been working here at the high school? Well, I started here as a substitute last January, and I began teaching in September. That's great, and you're also an SPFHS alumni. What year did you graduate? I graduated in 1995 alongside of my fellow classmate, Mrs. Groach, who teaches history, and Mr. McCauley, Ms. Keegan, Mr. Gutterman, and, and many, many more. Wow, that's great. So what else do you do? Um, you teach English? Mm -hmm. I, teach, I teach American literature and basic skills. And your hobbies outside of school are what? I like to read and write poetry. I also like to swim and run. I do yoga and just recently I got my boating certification so that I can ride my new wave runner. Wow, that's great. And you're also working on another project. Um, we heard around school that you've been uh, trying out for a survivor. Yeah, I tried out um, for Survivor, although I think that it might be too late to find out. I think that I probably didn't make it, but, you know, I saw my fingers crossed. Well, good luck and congratulations on being Faculty Member of the Month. Thanks, Katie. No problem. This is Katie Bruno reporting for 34 News. Now back to the studio. Thanks, Katie. We'll be right back with sports after this brief public service announcement. As the American military gets smaller, who will be there to answer the call? They will. They're the National Guard and Reserve, and they make up half of today's military forces. As an employer, you may be asked to support their mission. Remember, their response depends on yours. sports with a tasty Dan Zellickman. Thank you, Sunita. Well, the baseball team has had a hard lineup this tough, with tough teams the entire season. And despite losing the first round of the Union County Tournament and barely missing uh, qualifi qualificating for the state playoffs, the young team is looking for success in the next year. For more on the team, let's go to Tim Ryan. Hi, this is Tim Ryan reporting on location for 34 News. I'm here with Andrew Bavoni, the star catcher on the boys' baseball team. So, Andrew, what do you think has been the disappointment this season? Why have you been disappointing? Well, up to this point, our record's 9-11, and and we haven't been able to make the state cutoff yet. Well, we didn't make the state cutoff, and uh, we lost in the first round of the Union County Tournament. We seeded ninth. Um, I think it's due and partly to the fact that we're missing two of our star players, uh, Rob Matar, first baseman, and Lucas Francovilla, pitcher, both juniors to uh, injuries. Lucas dislocated his elbow, and Rob's suffering from cancer right now, so he's going through his therapies and things like that. And in addition to that, our team only has two seniors, and, you know, Despite the fact people may not think it, the maturing process is a big part of winning. And uh, we're not really mature in terms of our outlook on the game, preparing for games and things like that. But we're getting better. We've gotten better since the beginning of the year. And it looks like it should be a pretty bright year next year. What are you trying to accomplish for the rest of the season? Well, at the time, we only have two games left. And as of right now, we're still in competition for the uh, Watch On Conference. I think it's the National Division Championship. So we can be champions for the, for the Watch On Conference because we beat Westfield and Cranford once. We split the games with them also. So 
Uh, if we beat Linden and Shabazz, we may be tied for the conference championship with Cranford. So we're looking to do that. Where's the outlook for next season? Well, as I said before, this year we're all juniors, so next year we're all going to have a year under our belts and senior at the, at the uh, varsity level. So it looks pretty good, and being that Lucas and Rao will both be back next year to play, we'll have uh, you know a big bat in the lineup and a good arm pitching out there for us. So I don't know, it takes the pressure off a lot of other people and lets people play the games a little better. Okay, thanks, Andrew. This has been Tim Ryan. Now back to the studio. Thanks, Tim. The softball team became the first SPF softball team to get to the Union County Tournament since 1977, and they threatened to lose the tournament by losing to Governor Livingston in the finals 3-0. However, the girls did defeat Cranford to get to the finals, and the state playoffs will start soon. Let's go to Mike Heller for more on the softball team. Mike? Thirty for news. I'm here with Alicia Pinia and Katie Blum, two members of the varsity softball team. So, Alicia, how did you guys do in the county tournament this year? We made it to the finals. We beat Cranford in the semifinals after coming back from losing 3 nothing, And so we played GL in the finals and lost 3 nothing to them. All right, and Katie, how's it look for the rest of the season? Uh, I know you guys qualified for states. What seed did you get and who do you play and uh, how's it look? Um, we got the third seed and we're playing Persephone this Thursday. We should do good. All right, and um, Alicia, um, what's the odds you guys win the state championship? You know, um, who do you have to go through and uh, how does it look? Um, we have a pretty good chance of winning the state championship. But because uh, of all the, the support from the fans we get, especially John Corbin, and I'd like to thank all the fans that came out to watch us this past weekend because we had a huge crowd, which is very um, abnormal for softball games. So thank you to everyone. And uh, Katie, how's the team look next year? Um, the team, they're losing four starting infielders. It's going to be a tough year for them, but I think they should be doing good. Okay, this is Mike Keller. Now back to the studio. <laughs> John Corbin looks good, and so does the rest of the squad, as the boys' tennis team managed to have quite a successful season this year. They have a recent record of 17-5 and finished fourth in the counties, and finished the semifinals as well, before losing to the top seed in Mil Milburn. For more on the tennis team, let's go to Andy Costello. Andy? Costello reporting for 34 News. I'm here with Joe Pearson, one of the varsity tennis players. So tell me, Joe, what's your record for this season? 16 and 4. <laughs> and uh, who are the key players on the team? Um, John Corbin, Janet E. Beckelman, uh, Josh Wexler, myself, and Simon Poplansky. Are there any important matches coming up? Uh, no, our most important match was County, but that was two, a week ago. This has been Andrew Costello reporting. For the spring sports success did surely did not stop with the golf team. They placed fourth in the counties and third in the conference and fifth in states. For more on the team, let's go to Lindsey Curry. Lindsey? Record is about 14 and 2. We finished third in the county, third in the conference, actually fourth, fourth in the county, third in the conference, and fifth in the state sectionals. And when were those all the counties and states? Uh, they were all in the last two weeks. And how are you doing individually? Uh, I'm doing pretty well. My scoring average is under 40 for the first time in my high school career. Um, we have a match today against Cranford, but it doesn't really mean anything because we're out of the States, so it's just kind of for uh, pride. And are you expecting to beat Cranford, or are they good? Uh, well, they're pretty good, so we have to play good to beat them. Well, congratulations, and good luck with the rest of the season and next year. <laughs> this has been Lindsay Curry reporting for 34 News. Now back to the studio. The track team has once again been having a great season. They won the Union County Relays and then recently became the Union County Champions. They have state playoffs coming up, and also some athletes like Sprinter Ray Williams have the meet of the champions in the next few weeks. Good luck to all the runners. This month's male athlete of the month is Mike Dixon. The track athlete has spearheaded the team's successful season with his fine distance running. For more on Mike and his final season at SPF, let's go to Tracy Fitzgerald to cut up with him. Tracy? Reporting for 34 News, and I'm here with Mike Dixon, the Male Athlete of the Month. So, Mike, how's the track season going this year? The track season's going real well. We just won counties and our conference. And how are you doing individually? I was conference champion in the 800 and uh, hoping to move on to sectionals. And when do sectionals take place? That's uh, the 25th and the 26th. Okay. And um, did you decide where you're going to college? Yeah, I'll be going to Ramapo College. Are you running there? Yeah, I'll be running all seasons. Okay, well, this has been Tracy Child reporting for 34 News. Now back to the studio. Thanks, Trace. This month's Female Athlete of the Month is Ruth Rohr. The senior track star has helped the track team with her excellent shot put throwing. For more on Ruth, let's go to Salim Allen. Salim? <laughs> Thank you. 
Hi, this is Salim Allen Porter for 34 News. I'm here with Ruth Rohr, the Female Athlete of the Month. So, Ruth, uh, what sports do you participate here in Scotch Morning Summer High School? I'm on the track and field team. And uh, what seasons do you compete in track? We have winter track and spring track. All right, and how have you done this season? Well, both seasons. Um, I am conference champion for discus and for shot put. And our shot put team won the county relays this year. All right, that sounds good. And what college do you plan to go to? I'm going to the University of Michigan. And are you planning to participate in any sports there? No, just stuff on the side. No varsity sports. All right, sounds good. We wish you the best of luck. This is Salim Allen reporting for 34 News. Now back to the studio. Well, that's it for sports. Now let's go one last time back to hard news. Thanks a lot, Dan. Well, as this is our final broadcast of the year, we'd like to thank uh, a couple people. First, our uh, senior production team members. Uh, we have Jim Drews, Tim Lee, and Jason Ruggiero. We also want to remind uh, Dan Zellickman that uh, Sunita, myself, and uh, Susanna will not be here him, for him next year, so he's uh, pretty much on his own. So uh, for the final time, this is John Corbin. And I'm Sunita Shah. Have a great summer. Take care.